Hey guys, welcome back. So I've been having an issue with a little bit of play in the z-axis of this Fox Alien 4040 CNC. So today we're going to go ahead and replace the original bearings with these polymer I just 4 style. I will leave a link in the description below where you can purchase these from if you're interested in doing this upgrade to yours. So here you can see that the z-axis had some play to it. It just kind of wiggles around. There's a lot of chatter on the cuts. This doesn't look as clean as it should. So right here you can see now with it replaced, it's extremely solid. So if you're interested in this, stick around and check out this process as we go through. I'm gonna go ahead and remove these screws here that hold the main Z-axis to the gantry. So with those four screws out, this chassis just kind of comes off. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug all these connectors. With all those connections off, we have the Z-axis right here. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this cable here as well to get it out of the way. And the next step is to simply remove these two screws and the lower set screws on this blue connector here. So with that reposition a little better for the camera angle here, you can see these are the set screws I'm referring to. Just gonna go ahead and loosen that one. Rotate this here around. And then get in here and loosen this one. Now you notice this tool here, I've gone ahead and it used to have a ball head on the end like this one. And I've removed that off because in the past I've stripped out these set screws on a different CNC machine using the ball head. So having a more solid connection there prevents you from stripping out the Allens on those. And this is, of course, a two millimeter Allen screw. So make sure you use the right size when you take those out, because if you are trying to do this with an Imperial Allen screw, it's probably going to strip it out. So next, I'm going to go ahead and remove these screws for the linear rods here. And once these are off, the axis kind of just falls apart. So make sure you don't lose the screws or the lock washers that are on here. And now with those, the two set screws loosened and those other two screws taken out, we can disassemble the Z-axis just like that. So I'm gonna set this off to the side because we're done with that for now. And now I've got to get this off the lead screw and I can just simply turn it. Now, depending on how the the location of your set screws and how tight they were, this might bind. Mine did at first. I took a small file to it and went ahead and just filed down the little tiny piece that was uh, stick getting in the way, and now it slides right out. I'm going to go ahead and remove all the lubrication that's on this lead screw as well. I'll be replacing that with some PTFE dry lube. It's got something on it already, and I'm just afraid that that's going to uh, cause more sawdust to stick to it. All right, so we're basically done with that part. The next step here is to simply push these bearings out. So let's move over to my workbench where I've got a little bit more stable desktop to work with. So I've gone ahead and uh, clamped up some wood blocks in an arrangement that's gonna allow the bearing to slide uh, pretty far through. And I'm about to press this out, but we've got a couple set screws in here that are designed to help hold it in place. And with those out, I might not even need to press it that hard, so we'll see. So I was just about to show pressing this out and I had the motor was causing a little bit of issue with wanting to get in the way of how I was clamping stuff around. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this screw and just take the spindle motor out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clamp this one here in place. Now with that one clamped in place, we can go ahead and use one of the sockets that I grabbed here. And the socket is just a little bit smaller than the bearing. I have a short one and a deep socket one as well to press these out. If you are doing it this way with these stacked blocks sort of set up, just make sure that you've got it well supported so it doesn't try and get crooked on you. Oh, making sure to position it so it's not clamping onto your wood will help it come all the way out too. That kind of explains why I ran into 
a little bit of a stop right there on that one. And there, it just kind of released. You can see already down at the bottom, we're getting out already. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue with this, clamping down on it. Now I'll go ahead and slide that off to the side a little bit and we'll just keep on pressing this one in. You know, I thought I needed the uh, deep socket, but it turns out I do not. Oh, I ran out of threads on this clamp. Let's go ahead and back this clamp off real quick. Reposition and keep on going. that deep socket in there, one more clamp, one more press of the deep socket and it popped right out. So we're just going to repeat that same process for the other side. Then we can go ahead and clamp these ones in. Since I have it in this place, I'm just going to go ahead and clamp it in now. And this one here slides in quite a bit smoother than the original metal one. And here you can see it's almost in all the way. I'm just gonna clamp it until it bottoms out there. And we'll reinstall these set screws to make sure it's nice and tight. And we'll reinstall these set screws, but due to the nature of this bearing, it can be easily deformed. So you want to just make sure to look down in here to make sure that you're not squeezing it too much. And I'll show you real quick what squeezing it too much looks like. As you notice in here, it starts to deform right inside there. That's clearly too much tension on there. I'm just going to go ahead and back it out to right about that point where it's not actually squeezing it in too much. Now it's just a matter of repeating this process on the bottom for that set screw and then the same exact thing for the opposite side. So with those two all done, we're ready to start the reinstall process. I'm actually going to put the spindle back in there last. We'll go ahead and take all these parts back over to the CNC machine. So now we're just going to go ahead and reinstall these right in there. Just put in that threaded lead screw. And there we go, we're ready to jam on this. It already feels a lot more secure. So we're basically 
following the same step as disassembly, but in the reverse order. Always make sure to put on the coupler last, that way you can get these rods all nice and secure. I'm just going to loosely install these screws until it just starts to bottom out enough that it can still kind of freely move down in there. I don't know if you can see that too well, but with that over in there now, the rods can kind of move around if they need to. So what I want to do here is drive this back up to the top so that those bearings can help with the alignment of the top of these two rods before I tighten it down. Because the last thing you want to do is have them not uh, in line well enough and then as it drives to the top it will just get tighter and tighter and then it'll just kind of bind up or it'll overwork the stepper motor and that's no good either so now with it up near the top I'm going to tighten these down and that feels really good now up there I can go ahead and tighten these set screws back down for this coupler And I like to back them out and tighten them a couple times, and that really helps the set screws bite into that lead screw right there. Now, some people will even add Loctite to that. I don't actually prefer to do that. Instead, I'm going to add a little tiny drop of nail polish, just kind of between the screw and the housing. It doesn't add a lot of strength, but it does show whether or not it's moved. Now from that loosening and tightening technique and the adding of the nail polish, I've never had one of these come out. And I have thousands of hours over on my 3018 that has the exact same setup. Now, since we're here, I'm gonna repeat that process of tightening this other one, just to make sure it's nice and tight and add the nail polish to that one as well. Because the screws in there a little bit more, it, uh, it takes a little bit more nail polish. No special steps now. At this point, we're just going to mount it back on there the same way I had it before. And now that I do have this sacrificial waste board on here, I am going to lift this as high as possible as I tighten these down. All right, now with that on, we can go ahead and start plugging this stuff back in here. Starting with these limit switches. They actually are universal switches, so it does not matter which plug you plug these into. Uh, the left and the right are connected all the way through from top to bottom. So as long as you got a bottom connector plugging to a top and a top to the actual limit switch plug, then you are good to go. Spindle is plugged in, stepper is plugged in, limit switches are plugged in. We're ready for me to run some tests. And because I bought that four pack for only about 12 bucks, I've got a spare set that is going to go onto my 3018. All right, guys, that just about does it for this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos. Until next time, guys, have a great day.